In this video, I'm going to break down the real reasons behind the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the possible economic and geopolitical implication if this situation continues to escalate. You are watching The Financial Metaverse. It is a matter of record that before this conflict began, Russia made three significant demands which in their view is critical to their national security. Demand number one, water in Crimea. Crimea was annexed by Russia in 2014. I know you're probably thinking, what does annexed mean? Well, I had to look it up myself, but annexation in international law is the forcible acquisition of one state territory by another state, usually following military occupation of the territory. The history behind the annexation of Crimea is quite complex and requires a video of its own, so I won't get into the details of that right now. Crimea receives most of its fresh water supply from the 400 km long North Crimea Canal carried from Ukraine's biggest river, Dnipro, to the region. After the annexation, Ukraine cut the water supply to the region which created a serious water crisis and destabilized the economy in Crimea. So yes, it's all about the money, it's about the economics. Demand number two, Putin wants the Minsk II agreements implemented which would mean peace for the people of the Donbas region which have been the subject of massive and systematic human rights violations. Demand number three, which is probably the most important demand, is for Ukraine to remain neutral. In other words, no NATO. NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The alliance was formed in 1949 with the signing of the Washington Treaty after World War II. It is a security alliance of 30 countries from North America and Europe. NATO's fundamental goal is to safeguard the Allies' freedom and security by political and military means. The expansion of NATO east of Europe is an obvious threat to Russia as the alliance is made up of countries that are not friendly to Russia. This should come as no surprise as history shows us that states almost universally resist the close approach of unfriendly powers and alliances towards their borders. The United States has often threatened or used force to keep foreign powers that are unfriendly to them out of the Western Hemisphere. Specific instances include the 1954 CIA-engineered coup in Guatemala inspired by false U.S. fears that otherwise the Soviet Union might install a Soviet-friendly regime in Guatemala, the U.S. threat of war in the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis in response to Soviet deployment of nuclear forces to Cuba, the 1965 U.S. invasion of the Dominican Republic, inspired by false U.S. fears that otherwise a Soviet-friendly regime might arise under Dominican President Juan Bosch. CIA efforts to prevent the election of Salvador Allende to Chile's presidency in 1970 and to oust President Allende in 1973, born in part by false fears that he might be subject to Soviet influence. U.S. proxy wars in Nicaragua and El Salvador in the 1980s, animated by exaggerated U.S. fears that Soviet influence might otherwise appear in the area. The 1983 U.S. invasion of Grenada launched to forestall the unlikely danger that Soviet influence otherwise might appear. These are a few instances in which the U.S. specifically used force in order to keep the threat of foreign unfriendly powers out of the Western Hemisphere. In short, governments widely enforce what might be called the Nopembe Principle. No unfriendly powers in my backyard. They react with belligerence to most national security threats and with special belligerence to threats that appear near their borders. However, Ukraine actually increased the provocation against Russia in January 2022 by one, intensifying the bombardment of the Donbas region, two, threatening to retake Crimea, and three, entertaining the idea that Ukraine can actually be a NATO plus country. So, the die was cast. Russia inevitably invaded Ukraine, or rather, in the words of Vladimir Putin, conducted a special military operation. The liberal arguments of sovereignty in a world of great power geopolitics is fair but pointless. As such, in pragmatic terms, there are plenty of reasons for Russia to have taken the position they have taken. The important questions to consider are the following. 1. Why did Ukraine increase provocations when US President Joe Biden had said, quote, Putin has to do something. He can't do nothing, close quote. And two, what will happen now? The latest iteration of this game of great power geopolitics has of course been planned for some time now, as in the training and arming of a huge army of over 600,000 soldiers led by ultra-nationalists, 
and ignoring the horrors of the Donbass region. This plan was made public in late 2021 when Eldridge A. Colby, former lead architect of the 2018 U.S. National Defense Strategy, published the Strategy of Denial, American Defense in an Age of Great Power Conflict. The Great Plan was for a moral proxy war, support for the little nation whose sovereignty had been impinged. This would justify an endless supply of arms to fight Russia, coming from some of the wealthiest nations in the world as we are currently witnessing. And the clincher? Not a drop of US or European blood will be spilled other than that of Ukrainians, and the nationalists wanted it. The US could fight to the last Ukrainian. However, the great game isn't really Russia. They are just a small player, although an important player. A collapsed nation and neoliberal reconstruction would be very profitable, of course. Think about all those lovely commodities. No, the real target, yes, you guessed it, China. They are the US global peer competitor. By almost every economic matrix that matters, China has surpassed or is about to surpass the US. China are also the second largest military spender in the world. The US still retains one important power, and that is control over the global financial system, which brings with it the benefits of being the reserve currency and one more important thing, the power to decide against whom, why, how, and when to impose sanctions. As President Woodrow Wilson once said of sanctions, apply this economic, peaceful, silent, deadly remedy and there will be no need for force. So whoever controls sanctions rules the world. This brings us to the real reasons why the US is acting against Russia now and why Zelensky increased provocations leading to the inevitable consequences. You may or may not be aware of this, but China is in the process of implementing an alternative global financial system. They already have an alternative to SWIFT, the global interbank payment system. And what is worse from a US perspective is that the Chinese currency is more solid and has arguably greater value. It's been argued many times that the US dollar is propped up by being the reserve currency and by people holding dollars. Without this, its vast quantitative easing program and huge public spending deficit would haunt it. China has no QE program, no deficit. In fact, it has huge reserve and a massive economy. In short, if the Chinese global financial system took over, if ever more banks join and use the Chinese interbank payment system, CIPS for short, rather than SWIFT, the US has had it. It becomes what Britain drifted into. A sad island dreaming of a glorious past and lost opportunities. Why? Because the US would no longer be able to impose sanctions. So China must be stopped and Russia via Ukraine is the first step. There will be consequences of course. The worst one, from a US perspective, they have actually sped up the alternative global financial system. Russia has been forced to trade outside of the dollar and nations are buying gas, oil, wheat, fertilizers, and so on, all commodities the world needs. Russia has also backed its currency with gold at a guaranteed price. How long before the yuan joins suit? What is more is that most nations of the world did not sanction Russia. They might buy their time before risking the wrath of the US by buying oil and other commodities in rubles, but they will. They will want to get their national reserves out of dollars by watching on in horror as Russian reserves were seized. They'll prefer a Chinese law-based system to US whims in a rule-based system. All they need is confidence. But unfortunately, this increases global tensions. The US will now be in a hurry in this race against time. As in the case of Pakistan and the removal of Khan, it will want to show little nations of the world it's still the big bully in town. They will want to frighten the little nations from trading in rubles and the CIPS. We of course are watching with great anxiety as these events are unfolding before our eyes and hope that global leaders will act sensibly and de-escalate the situation between Russia and Ukraine. These are of course my views. I hope they've given you a bit of insight into what is going on in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I'm interested to hear what your thoughts and views are. Please share them in the comment section below. And to receive more videos like this one, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And look out for these videos.